Hello and welcome um, to my short introduction to my chapter in Senses of Focusing. It's entitled, um, it lulls me into a false sense of security, but I go there willingly. Music resonates with Stop Process, an IPA study into musical experiencing, unravel through music and focusing. It's um, part of Senses of Focusing volume two and it's chapter 12. Um, so about me, I um, studied on the counseling diploma um, at the UEA, and then I went on to uh, do an MA and a PhD there too. Um, both the MA and PhD were about music and focusing. Um, I'm also currently a student um, talking therapist at UEA Student Services. So my journey with focusing really began on my diploma. I was taught by Martin Langston. Um, I was also a trainee trainer on the course. Um, and my interest in music and focusing began with my own experience of working, um, working with my inner resources, working with the felt sense. And I noticed that there was a similarity between how I loved certain types of music and felt them in my body and, and how I could work with the felt sense and focusing. My BMA, which looked into whether people could um, focus on music, it was called Focusing and Music, and it was supervised by Judy Moore. My PhD, um, which was supervised by Judy and um, Professor Nigel Norris, was entitled A Phenomenological Inquiry into Focusing in Music. And this, um, this particular chapter in Senses of Focusing is, is taken from elements of my thesis. It's, it's, it's uh, a, a small part of, of what my research discovered. Um, so the I don't know why is really key to, to my, the start of my journey and also um, like my connection to focusing and also to music and then sense of I don't know why but I'd like to find out um, the title of this um, this particular chapter it lulls me into a false sense of security but I go there willingly was actually a quotation from one of my re client research participants they loved that piece particular piece of music that they were drawn to and focused on in the session but didn't know why because it created sadness it created links with their feelings of depression and in fact the paradox of this um of why people listen to sad music has has troubled and baffled um, psychologists and philosophers and researchers across the ages. Um, it wouldn't, I imagine, surprise many focuses as to why two sets of different kind of felt senses can coexist. Um, and that that has been a problem with cognitive studies and music um, that I have found. So I don't know why in the felt sense felt like a really important starting point um, for music um, focusing research um, and certainly music's connection to bodily experiences unite bit experiencing unites both the literature that I read into in terms of research into music's effect and also the body experiencing that can happen with a felt sense um, in focusing so a phenomenological inquiry into focusing music really came from the, the, my MA, which established that music could provide a felt sense that could be focused on by experienced focuses and that could yield an incredible amount of felt information and create real new knowledge about a particular problem that was brought with the piece of music. So my question research was really what would happen if everyday music focusing was offered to therapy clients, maybe a piece of music that said something about how they were feeling right there and then. Um, there were there were manifold ethical considerations in this, which we um, Judy and and uh, and I worked meticulously to um, observe. We were commended by um, the ethics committee at the UEA, and we um, we were able to um, offer um, music and focusing to clients of the counselling service. Those sessions were transcribed and produced the data for my research. Um, these were um, analyzed by, first of all, interpreted phenomenological analysis, um, which is a relatively recent um, research tool that prioritizes the individual individuality of the researcher, and also um, really follows the phenomenological tradition of exploring experience in its own terms. Um, Jen Lin was a phenomenologist and he, um, uh, his sense of experiencing really informed um, informed the prioritization of, of what is actually going on for the client um, in my research. I also crossed this with Jen Lin's experiencing scale. And here um, I um, present um, the, the stages of that, beginning with talking about events and going to um, experiencing sort of level seven of embarking on a process of in-depth self-understanding. The experiencing scale felt like it was really resonant with phenomenology and an IPA because it rates only what the speaker says. 
Um, and it's an analytical tool that could observe the ways in which participants could work with their inner experiencing, what it was that they were, were embarking on when they started to work with a felt sense. Um, so the title of this screen is Ahi Spaghetti. And that was the felt sense of the client who described their music as lulling them into a full sense of security, but going there willingly. Um, and she felt it in her stomach. And uh, at that point, I felt delighted. I thought, well, yay, she's got a felt sense, we can work on it. And actually what the research showed, what it demonstrated was experience focuses could, could experience that ongoing process of in-depth self-understanding that, that marked level six and seven. And client focuses really stopped at the creation of the felt sense and became stuck. Um, my client uh, just wanted the achy spaghetti to dissolve and could go no further than that. So I was stuck myself at this point as a researcher. I thought, oh my goodness, this, this isn't working for the clients. They can only get to this point. And, and, um, and I also was aware of the ethical considerations as, as uh, a researcher, I might have I might have found, tried to find different ways to help the client to focus. As a therapist, I just wanted to stay alongside their experiencing. And so I was left with data that showed, that demonstrated that the um, experience focus could indeed go in and work very much with their felt sense of the music and the client focus was, was stuck. Uh, in fact, um, a fellow PhD candidate um, who was in an entirely different field helped and reminded me uh, that the, the data is really there to be looked at and, and explored in different ways. And it reminded me of Carl Rogers' Facts of Friendly. The experiencing scale helped me to look at the stuckness in the client work and, and, and to notice that the I don't know became a tyranny for the client. And that some, sometimes with the clients, they wanted something that seemed to be wrong. They, they go there willingly. They want to spend time with it and don't necessarily want to unravel it. And I was reminded of um, and, and worked with Judy Moore thinking about stopped process and, and, and stuckness and the fact that that really enriched my findings with the data. Something in us wants to go there and another part knows we should not. Um, and so with the experiencing scale, with the themes emerging from IPA, became a kind of an explanation for what it was about um, a felt sense of a piece of music that, that wasn't going to be able to be unraveled and explored and yet could bring so much solace that actually billions of us across the world find in music it gives us an experiencing and provides us a kind of a sense I guess a sense of a harmony with somebody who understands those kind of experiences that for a moment for those brief few moments of the song people listening to music can have their experiencing resonated with acknowledged somebody else feels it too and not necessarily wanting to go further in it but yet that could be enough focusing on it however could yield much much more for further um insight into this my uh, my chapter goes into this much more but i wanted this to be a brief introduction um and also to thank <sighs> from the bottom of my heart, Judy and Nikos, for um, inviting me to be part of this extraordinary book and to be alongside other focuses. Thank you all for carrying this forward. Thank you. <laughs>